Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about memorizing code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do programmers memorize their code like you do for the alphabet in a language? Why or why not? Yes, we do. Well, I don't know what you mean by it. like for the alphabet. Like, yeah, it's not like I can sit here and like say all the keywords in order, like the alphabet. I'm um, not. I don't think we have any. Maybe we do. I don't know. Do we have any songs that we can sort of sing to learn all the the words in a language? I, I don't know. But the if. If you're asking me if we memorize code, yes, like it's sort of uh, you you memorize the things that you are using on a frequent basis, which are like the basic things, like how to declare a variable, create a function, create the loop, um, create a conditional statement, like a switch statement, or if you're going to create uh, what else? Um, well, your favorite libraries, like how you set things up how you import things to different files and etc 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 so there are like these common things that you sort of memorize not in the beginning in the beginning that's why it takes quite a time and quite a bit of time when you're a junior to do the even some of the most simplest things because you're sort of trying to figure out how it all fits together which takes a bit of getting used to because well well I, I honestly I think that it is that uh, there's not much in terms of familiarity with other things that you might have been doing on the computer with software development. It's a very, it's almost like a black box type of thing where rather when you get there it's something that is so different that most people don't really have any organic exposure to it. Uh, I don't wonder if that makes sense or not, but you mean uh, for a lot of people familiarity is the thing that leads to under the comprehension such as well, you know when you use one website you understand how to use another one even though it might not be the same website it sort of have like a navigation menu and like there are these common elements that you sort of pick up and in software development that it's really in my experience not the case it's almost alien to you what's going on it's not like writing in a, lang in a, in a normal language like text or anything like that there is text and there might be some words that you might be familiar with but now the words actually I mean, there are rules for how you structure the code and how to do all like the these different things right so it takes some time to memorize it but you will start to memorize some of it you're not going to be able to memorize all of it and I think that that is that's one of those things where the imposter syndrome comes into play for a lot of developers where they sort of feel as if because they don't have an answer to all the possible questions they feel as if they are not good at what they do but the reality is guys that most of the developers they they will remember a lot of stuff but they will, and you know, the more senior they get, the more they will remember. But it's really rare, it's almost impossible. I mean, myself included, I don't remember everything about programming languages, even the ones that I use every single day. I look things up all the time, it's part of the job because the reality is that the area that you are responsible for in IT or like as a software developer is absolutely enormous. Uh, it depends on what type of work you're doing, but let's take myself for an example. So my ultimate job, my responsibility is literally to ensure the success of my team and the product that I'm working on. Now, you can call that a full stack developer, but the reality is that it's bigger than that. It's not just a full stack developer job. I literally have to know how all the pipelines work. I, or rather I have to figure out how they work. I don't have to know know how they work, but in order for my team to actually be able to do a lot of the stuff that we do, I need to not just be a front-end developer and a back-end developer and understand how databases work, I have to know how pipelines work, I have to know how to Docker work, how Docker works, Git and GitHub Actions, in our case we're using Azure, so Azure Pipelines, Azure Boards, Azure DevOps, there are tons of tools and then we have security things like uh, cookie banners and like all these other nice little things uh, like Azure, like 
like uh, how to use the different services on Azure in this in this instance uh, using like version control system like all the git related operations because we have you know, of course we have automated workflows and CI pipelines I need to know how to de how deployments work which brings us to how to use load balancers and how to set up DNS how to set up like literally everything related to the system to a website this is the uh, this is the area of responsibility that I ultimately have and the reason why you I have that is because a, I'm supposed to be or rather the the company has a work structure where they need an individual who can do all of those things but I'm not equally good with all of that stuff but some of the stuff you sort of have to like figure out I've done enough work so I remember some of the things from all like if I remember from the stuff that I do more often I remember most of the stuff that I'm doing but I still have to look things up and from the stuff I don't do so often like for example configuring specific workflows so like I mean it's not like I've memorized all of the uh, the ways that you can configure a workflow in uh, github actions or Azure pipelines or something like that that's something I look up every single time unless it's like something really really trivial but you don't do it so often so you don't remember it and it's fine to look it up because the companies they usually don't care so much that you remember everything it's more about that you're able to in a timely fashion produce the necessary results so if if let's say that you remember 40 percent or 50 percent of how to do something and you can read up on the other 50 percent or something like that and still produce the results then it doesn't really matter if you memorize it or not. You have enough skill to actually just catch up in a quick, in a timely fashion, uh, update or do like whatever you need, uh, and then like the results are equal as if you could remember it from the first, uh, from the get go. But yeah, in this scenario, it's better for me to well it's better for the company rather than having one specialist for each thing which actually in, actually takes longer you don't think a lot of people don't really think about that but uh, it's actually better for you in many cases to have people who are broader when you're doing certain things that sort of can like do all the things and sort of figure out how they work in and still do a good job rather than having one person who like is just a specialist in each individual thing because a lot of the stuff that the companies want to do they span multiple areas and that's why I tell people that the the end state or like the end person type of like the high let's call it the highest level if we talk about like leveling up as a software developer the highest level is for you to be able to run basically the entire company because the, and the reason being because when you only know one part of all the, the different areas that you you know mean uh, the, and I just mentioned a, lot, a few of the things that I need to know in order to like run the entire uh, entire team's infrastructure and like uh, the development process. And we're not even talking about product development related things and like third party clients, etc., etc. For uh, like analytics, etc., etc. All of these things they make up an entire system. And a lot of software developers who start out, they just think about the code, but there is so much more around just the code that you wrote, this thing that makes the CSS look nice, or like the thing that makes the, I mean, you create a unit test, or like some endpoint on the back end, like that's one tiny little part of this gigantic ecosystem of people and logic and uh, systems and services and so forth and so forth. And it's, it's like a network. It's sort of like, any network you just you, you in order to be effective at doing work within the with the, as a node within that network you sort of can't just say that I'm just gonna care about my little thing here you sort of have to memorize and like understand like a bigger perspective like a larger portion of the network you might not understand the whole thing that's inhuman basically because I mean nobody knows everything about everything but you sort of pick up a bigger sphere of understanding and so memorization it comes well it's necessary to a certain degree but it's not like you have to feel like if you can't remember how to do certain things uh, that that's a bad thing I mean I say this on a fairly regular basis yeah I can't remember exactly how to do this but let me look it up 
and most that that's perfectly fine guys as long as you can produce the results in a decent amount of time it's okay to look things up here I mean, most uh, higher education type of jobs uh, do exactly that thing so what I want you to take away from this is that yes software developers they do memorize uh, code uh, not everything because it's sort of as you were saying like as the alphabet you don't necessarily know every word in a language but you learn like the basic structures of the alphabet so that you can create like words and all of that stuff and for us software developers it's a very similar sort of thing and usually the more experience you get or like the broader you go or like the more things you expose yourself to the more you pick up it really comes down to sort of how you do work and what type of work you do and how much you're challenging yourself if you just stay with the exact same task you probably will remember exactly like that portion of the thing but if you go really uh, if you depending on you of course and how much you push yourself and like what you do uh, you might grow your uh, area of responsibility to like a fairly large area where like there's a lot of things that you are sort of responsible for and then it's basically impossible for you to remember all of it because there's simply too much and trust take me take it from me guys it doesn't take that long to get to a point where you're sort of responsible for like the basically the entire system and the team and like stakeholders and stuff stuff like that and when you get to that point it really is down to one part like your foundation skills but a lot of it is just how quickly can you figure out how something works how quickly can you read up on a new tool and sort of figure out how do, to do things and how things are structured etc etc you sort of have to learn on the go and do it fairly quickly uh, so that you can produce in a timely fashion but there's no way you can memorize all these systems and they all change as well they keep on changing which is also a very nice thing if you love that sort of stuff yeah, it's gonna be a treat for you if you don't like that sort of stuff yeah you just stick to one part of that and just don't get involved but that's up to each each of us have a great day